For more on the Nobel Prize, we are joined by Yin Zhuhai, Zhang Fan, an associate professor of astronomy at Beijing Normal University. And in Stockholm, Sweden, we have Marcus Janssen, who is an associate professor at Stockholm University. Welcome to both of you. Uh, this is a wonderful and exciting week with all kinds of Nobel Prize likely to be unveiled to the rest of the world. Uh, Mr. Janssen, I mean, based in Stockholm yourself, I'm sure this is a, one of the most exciting time of the year. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's very exciting, and, and uh, especially this year, I think, uh, because uh, it's, uh, the, the prize was awarded to research that's very close to my own field, so, so I was very happy this year. So how is it to your field? How close is it to your field? Uh, so basically, what, what two of this year's uh, laureates, uh, Michel Mayor and Didier Keo, uh, what their discovery uh, led to was basically the whole research field uh, that I'm now working in. Uh, so, so this research field basically didn't exist uh, before this discovery, and now it's one of the biggest research fields uh, in astronomy. So it's, it was really a fundamental discovery. Describe this field, please. You sound like a, really a scientist. I have to follow up with many questions in order to get some yeah. real essence. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Mr. Absolutely. Yes. So, so <laughs> yes. So my, my research field is about uh, extrasolar planets. So that's planets that revolve around other stars than the sun. Uh, so, uh, you know, before this discovery in the early 90s, we still didn't know if any other stars had planets around them because none had been discovered yet. Um, but in the sort of early to mid 90s, this uh, discovery of a planet around the star 51 Peg uh, was, was discovered. Uh, and since then, the field has really accelerated. And today we know about more than 4,000 uh, exoplanets mm -hmm. around different stars uh, in our galaxy. Mm -hmm. Your talk, I'm sure, reminds Mr. Zhang, who is coming from Beijing, a lot of the areas in which he has been researching on and has been very excited. What about your insights so far, Mr. Zhang, of this year's Nobel Prize laureate? Before the middle of the last century, um, it really isn't quite, quite considered a science. It's considered more in the realm of uh, philosophy. Uh, and scientists sometimes use that in a slightly derogative terms uh, way, uh, meaning that the, uh, the claims are not verifiable. Uh -huh. uh, but since that time, and particularly due to the contribution of this, uh, this year's laureate, uh, James Peebles, observational confirmation of a lot of the uh, theoretical predictions uh -huh. have been made possible. So he basically researched into what people should look at and how to interpret the results. And after that, basically, cosmology become, became another field in astronomy that's really, really strong, like right. the uh, actual planet search. Yeah. It, it seems that Nobel laureates have been able to open many unknown doors and pointing to the uncharted paths to many of us in the rest of the world. But now, I have to remind both of you gentlemen, the world is at a critical juncture. We see a lot of debate about multilateralism, unilateralism, about politics, about international platforms or not, um, whether there's a win-win or there's only, uh, you know, we win first no matter what the others are doing. So what does th this kind of debate mean for scientists like you? And how will that, do you think, impact on the discussions related to the achievements of the Nobel laureate. Uh, Mr. Janssen, you want to go first? Um, I would perhaps look at it from, from, from maybe the, the, the opposite perspective, which is that uh, I think that the, the research um, that we're doing is really sort of um, unifying because we, we, are, we are looking at the universe and we realize that we're, that we're quite, um, you know, the earth is kind of small um, and it's a very small mm. part of the universe. Uh, so it's kind of, uh, I think it motivates us as, as humans to stick together uh, rather than sort of argue about, uh, you know, small matters on Earth. Mm. To you, scientists like you, Mr. Janssen, when the politicians are talking about things, when the trade wars are going on, to you, what are those? 
Um, I think, you know, any time you have international um, relations, international connections, there will be, uh, you know, frictions, uh, and, and, and that will lead to, to, to debates and so on. Uh, but I think, uh, to me, uh, you know, I, I see more of the positive sides. I see the, the collaborations that come out of it, you know, the possibilities um, to, to, to find new collaborations, right. uh, you know, exchange new ideas and so on. Yeah. Right. Mr. Zhang, to you, I mean, you're originally from China. There has been a long debate in China for decades as to why the Chinese has not won a Nobel Prize. Of course, uh, Ms. Tu Yu Yu's winning the Nobel Prize have certainly provided a lot of people with the uh, satisfying answer. So now people are not asking just questions related to national borders, but rather asking questions from China about what does this year's Nobel laureate's research mean to all of us? How do you see this change in people's attitude toward an international uh, prize as important as the Nobel Prize? Well, this year's uh, awards, they think, as I said earlier, they share some similarities in that they open up new research fields. And once a new research field opens up, uh, that means uh, a, a substantial body of um, researchers and, and funding would go into a particular area, and that has to come from many different governments. So they, by opening up a new new area, that opens up the opportunity for China, uh, including China, as well as everybody else, to do something meaningful in the future. Um, and for example, the EXO Planet Search, um, China's new radio telescope, who participate in that and, and look for a planet with, with magnetic fields. That sort of things, and and these awards are to people that, to, to some people, they're surprising, uh, in in the sense that, um, in particular, in the cosmology category, mm. uh, the person who won it, really contributed over many 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 years, uh, in not single, not, not like single explosive discovery, but rather contributing very gradually, very solidly in almost everything in that field. So this should teach people that, you know, Nobel Prize is not the goal here, and especially for, Chine for Chinese people, you should concentrate on science. If you do solid work, you will be rewarded or whatever you build up. Well, Mr. Janssen, um, at a time of a geopolitical change, even though you do not enjoy watching all the latest development, but that's just a matter of fact for our world, do you think the kinds of cooperation, particularly about science, whether it's specific projects or uh, macro issues likely to continue as it used to be? Uh, what would that mean? How would scientists like you prepare for the best and the worst? Yes, uh, I mean, I, I think collaborations will continue. I think they will have to continue in the sense that, uh, you know, to make deeper and deeper discoveries about the universe, uh, we basically need more and more complicated uh, machinery, more and more complicated facilities and so on. Uh, and that means that you have to have more and more countries uh, coming together and, and collaborate. So I think uh, it will happen by necessity. I mean, uh, everyone realizes that, you know, in order to make these big, big discoveries, a lot of parties have to collaborate. And, and then, uh, you know, if it has to happen, then it, 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 it tends to happen, I think. Mm. Mr. Zhang, your take? Nowadays, because the, uh, the size of the instruments, uh, the, the, the funding sizes, uh, science relies very heavily on public funding, which means scientists' collaboration sometimes uh, get disrupted by political winds. And that is very, in my opinion, very destructive and uh, not, not very helpful at all, because in my opinion, um, politics fundamentally boils down to who gets how much what's existing you know, how, much, how big the cake. It's all about dividing up the cake. And science and technology is about making the cake bigger, so everybody gets a bigger share. Um, so I, I just think um, you, can, you can fight whichever way you, want, you like, but don't get in the middle of the important things, you know, making things better for everybody. 
<laughs> Interesting. I think this is the inner call from uh, the scientists like you guys, the, even the younger generation, that the politicians should really listen to this. Uh, what is the most important for all of us? Uh, before we go, one important question, Mr. Janssen, of course, there are so many areas of development in all kinds of sciences. Um, and Nobel Prize every year could only have the capacity of honoring uh, one branch or even smaller than one branch of all the areas. So what does that mean to the other scientists who are watching uh, these events, you yourself included, about the future? Uh, well, you know, uh, I think uh, it, it's, you know, regardless of, of whether you, you win a Nobel Prize or not, uh, I think they act as an, as an inspiration, mm. you know. Uh, I think um, you know, n not everyone who, who, who's an athlete will win an Olympic gold, say. But I think uh, the, the, the gold medalist can still expi inspire a lot of people, uh, you know, to, to, to join the, the field and do their best. And uh, I think, you know, even if you end up with, with a silver medal, I think you, you can sort of uh, be, be happy about what you've, what you've accomplished. So, so I think... Um, yeah, I, I think it's true, as you say, that, it, that yeah. you know, it, it can only, uh, you know, highlight limited fields and so on. But I think uh, that also gives it a sort of exclusivity, uh, which, which means that, you know, it gets a lot of attention and so on. And I think that that's a good thing. Mm. And Mr. Zhang, of course, uh, it's not just the Nobel Prize that the Chinese are very interested in, but also in China, there is just an extreme uh, uh, rise of uh, enthusiasm uh, towards science and technological development over the past decade. And now in China, you also have a lot of science awards uh, besides the Nobel Prize, which is internationally. So how do you see this uh, increasing sense uh, and, uh, about uh, science and about uh, technological cooperation uh, from China with the rest of the world? Uh, what does that mean? for Chinese response to this year's Nobel Prize and the futures to come? Well, it's, it's quite uh, encouraging to see all these uh, young people getting really interested. Not just young people, it's, it's the, the awards, there are entrepreneurs, uh, business people behind those awards. So they're now recognizing the, the need for, uh, for, for original innovation, for blue sky research and all, all of that, fundamental research. And, and this will only push China in, towards the right direction in the future, where um, it contributes more and more towards science. I remember having many conversations with various kinds of Nobel laureates, and what they have in mind, mainly at the very beginning of the conversation, is always the process of research is much more rewarding than the prize itself. On that note, I want to thank both of you for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, from uh, Stockholm, Marcus Janssen, and from uh, Beijing originally, Zhang Fan. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you.